Olá, é... meu nome é Francisco Brito Cruz, eu sou diretor aqui do Internet Lab e eu e a Beatriz é... vamos entrevistar o professor Hans Albrecht. É... A gente vai deixar mais detalhes sobre o professor na descrição do vídeo e começar a fazer algumas perguntas para ele sobre retenção de dados e a experiência dele sobre esse assunto. So, professor, um, the first question will be uh, done by Beatriz. Professor Alpest, uh, metadata produced in the use of telecommunication service and internet applications uh, uh, can help the state to investigate crimes and in law enforcement. And however, it can uh, tell a lot about people, so it can be very sensitive to the privacy of users. Um, how do you see the interest in the state in the retention of metadata? And do you think there is any difference when the crime committed is made uh, using a telecommunication service or the internet in comparison to when it's not? I think, uh, first of all, um, th there is no, no, um, no question that uh, law enforcement and security agencies uh, can make use and uh, effective use of uh, um, traffic data. That means telecommunication traffic data, location data and all that. However, we have uh, to make a difference between the use of uh, traffic data, which are available um, when it comes to operation of telecommunication providers, and the retention of telecommunication data. Uh, use of uh, telecommunication traffic data, which are available uh, as, a, as, a, as a consequence of uh, the operation of a telecommunication uh, company, I think there's no objection against that. Um, tele um, uh, security agencies, police, uh, prosecution services, they may, under certain uh, safeguards provided by procedural criminal law or by um, other uh, laws, make use of this data. However, when it comes to retention of telecommunication data, that is something different. Because in case of retention of telecommunication data, it's uh, not only individual data which are uh, which are um, uh, um, which are transferred from telecommunication providers to a security or police, but it's uh, first of all retention of all traffic data related to uh, mobile uh, phones or internet traffic uh, and so on uh, without any cause. So there's no cause. It's just retaining data. Although there is, first of all, no justification for that, because uh, the telecommunication data is not in need of this data in order to, uh, for commercial purposes, and uh, there is also no suspicion um, which could justify retaining data for individual users. So it, um, this kind of differentiation has to be made. And what we are discussing is not the use of traffic data in general. That, uh, I think, uh, is uh, uh, something uh, police forces and uh, um, prosecution services should be able to do, um, because it's, uh, it can be compared to the use of fingerprints or the use of uh, uh, wiretaps, uh, listening to um, um, uh, uh, conversations uh, between suspicious, uh, suspected uh, persons. Retention of telecommunication data is different because with retention of telecommunication data uh, the, almost everybody is uh, affected and interference with privacy right and the right uh, to protection of personal data has to be justified. So when it comes to the use of traffic data in a case, in a criminal case, where there is a suspicion of a criminal offence, there's justification. 
It's justified because there's suspicion. And uh, if they, all other um, safeguards are complied with, then I, in general, have no objection to use uh, traffic data, whether it's related to uh, cell phone uh, conversations or to um, internet uh, use and so on. However, when it comes to retaining the traffic data, location data uh, for all um, uh, those individuals or companies uh, who um, own a cell phone, then there has to be a good cause provided. Why should uh, the state be, um, why should the state uh, be able to retain this data and to uh, make possibly use uh, of this data at some point uh, later in time. So, <clears throat> speaking on, on data retention, uh, one of the most frequent arguments used against mandatory data retention is that rights to privacy and protection of users' telecommunications data for, are violated for preventive security purposes and without any suspicion against them at the time they are saved. So does the state treat all citizens as potential criminals when imposing mandatory data retention? Are they all under suspicion? Um, in a way, they are not under suspicion. Uh, because, uh, of course, a general data retention is not, cannot be based, cannot be grounded on suspicion. And there is no way that uh, the state may, cons uh, may, may, may regard all um, uh, uh, people, uh, all members of society, all citizens as suspicious. That is not possible. Everybody knows that. And that is what I uh, said is a problem. It's a legal problem, it's a political problem, and it's in particular also a problem um, uh, as regards the organization of um, um, a state and the relationship between a state and citizens. Because when retaining all traffic data, um, there is no ground, no legitimate ground to retain these data. You said uh, the state treats all um, citizens perhaps as suspicious, but the state doesn't do that. The state knows, police know, we all know these uh, 200 million Brazilian uh, citizens, they are not suspicious. Uh, they are not, uh, nobody suspects them of having committed a crime. They, but they, um, their rights are interfered with. Yeah? If there was a suspicion, then of course, that could be a legitimate ground, but there's no suspicion. Everybody knows that. And that is, for example, something um, the European Court of Justice has um, discussed in its, uh, uh, in its uh, very important decision one and a half years ago, um, Luxembourg Court of uh, Justice, when the court said that General data retention, as provided in the Directive of the European Union 2006, that is infringing on the uh, um, uh, European Union Charter of Fundamental Rights and in particular on the uh, right to privacy and on the right uh, to uh, of, uh, protection of personal data. And it's interesting to see how the court argued. It's interesting to, to look at the arguments of the court. The court said, when it comes to um, considering on the one hand the interest of the state in um, effectively implementing criminal law in providing for security on the one hand and the interest of citizens in privacy in, in, in maintaining their privacy, then there must be some balancing. 
course, I mean, that is important, Balance, balancing privacy on the one hand and security or effective law enforcement on the other hand. This is important, there is of course interest in effective law enforcement, there is legitimate interest in security, there is also legitimate interest in privacy, legitimate interest in the protection of personal data. So uh, balancing is uh, necessary. However, when looking at general data retention, what happens there? There's no balancing, because there's no, no balancing at all. It's just a general um, a approach which says, in the interest of security, all data will be nothing such as a balance. It's just, uh, just a plain interference, and the European Court said that is not possible. So. Uh, we have, of course, a legitimate interest in security, but we then have to sort out what kind of uh, 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 conditions must be present and what kind of conditions serve as a balance uh, in terms of uh, this interest in privacy, this interest in data protection. And here the court said, of course, uh, data retention cannot be justified with concrete suspicion. If there was a concrete suspicion, there is no problem because then, of course, I can retain data for this individual case, for this individual cell phone, or for uh, I'd, um, an, a certain number of identified cell phone, so cell phones. But in case of general retention, I need, as a minimum. Um, some legitimate uh, grounds which say that in a certain case re general retention can be justified. And that might be the case, for example, if there is, uh, say, if security, uh, security agencies uh, m say that there is a uh, risk of terrorist, uh, terrorist uh, violence, then perhaps for a limited region for a limited number of persons, data might be retained for a limited period of time, but not a general data retention, uh, um, uh, a general data retention regime which uh, would uh, do away with suspicion and would do away with uh, balancing. So uh, it's, in, it's also interesting because um, the uh, Federal Constitutional Court of Germany, in a, it's an old decision of the, in the 1980s, in a way um, also uh, 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 focused on this point uh, uh, with another uh, line of arguments. The Federal Constitutional Court of Germany back then said the state should never be allowed to just uh, uh, retain data without knowing for what concrete purpose these data are necessary. So um, <laughs> it's kind of uh, interesting because states, of course, not only police forces are always interested in data. Uh, it's not bad to have data, have information about citizens and so on. And now we don't need them, but perhaps we will need them next year or in two years, or in five years. So why not collecting everything? And the Federal Constitutional Court back then said that is not a regime which could be, um, which could uh, hold in face of the interest in privacy, the interest of in, uh, data protection, because that would allow the state to uh, collect everything. And then, of course, um, the privacy right would have no value anymore. There would be no, no weight anymore if the state could in fact uh, 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 argue uh, we could possibly need these data in two years, five years, seven years. And the same applies not only of course to telecommunication data, traffic data, the same um, of course, applies in principle to 
uh, the data which come with credit card trans transactions, with bank transactions, with uh, your uh, uh, television set uh, at home, which also uh, produces a lot of data, with the uh, electricity data, which uh, allow um, uh, people somewhere to say, ah, she's at home now because uh, we see that the consumption rate is going up and now it's going down, she's going to bed, and all these data. That is, if it, it all comes together, there's big data. If that would be possible, <laughs> there would be no protection at all. Then we could do away with the privacy right and the right uh, of uh, protection of personal data. So I think uh, that this uh, approach of the European Court of uh, Justice which says retention as a general, as a as a as a as a, uh, um, a general approach to collecting, retaining data, that is not possible. There must be always uh, um, on, on the other side. There must be some ground which says that in a certain case, uh, retention is justified because of suspicion because of a certain risk that uh, serious crimes are being committed and so on. But there must be something. No, um, um, uh, 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 no general uh, 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 data retention. Uh, uh, perhaps, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, you, you are a bit familiar with uh, German uh, there's nothing like uh, that in the English language. In German language, it's Vorratsdatenspeicherung, Vorratsdaten. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, the Federal Constitutional Court back then said, is at least at the minimum critical, and which the um, European Court of Justice said that is something that cannot be used as, a, as an instrument, Vorratsdaten. I mean, you collect data in order to have them and perhaps uh, make use of them whenever you will need it in the future. Well, a frequent argument made by the advocates of mandatory data retention is that there is no direct or systematic retention made by the state. Rather, uh, the retention is made by private companies and access to them is only made upon authority of the competent uh, authorization of the competent authority. So how do you see this argument? Oh, that is not an argument. It's just, uh, um, it's just uh, um, no argument because uh, uh, when looking at the development of uh, the relationship between the, the private sector and the public sector, we see that more and more um, data collection and so on takes place uh, in the private sector. More and more security relevant uh, issues are dealt with in the private sector. Uh, and uh, when looking for example at Europe, at uh, Germany, uh, we saw that there was a privatization uh, process going on starting in the 1980s and that in particular affected uh, telecommunication companies. Telecommunication was before the 1980s was a public, a state-run, a state-operated thing. So the state collected all the data. <laughs> and now um, it's a private sector. However, um, uh, what the state uh, orders to do, and the state um, in, in, in the form of data retention laws requests from telecommunication companies to retain these data. There's an, uh, a mandatory, it's a mandatory data retention. So uh, telecommunication uh, uh, providers, they face uh, uh, sanctions, penal or administrative sanction, if not complying with data retention. In this case, the actions of the telecommunication um, the companies are, um, in a way, actions of the state. So the state orders data retention, and that means that the state that the data retention which occurs in a, in a private uh, company is to be imputed on the state. 
it's uh, like uh, um, there's other examples. The state sometimes or police sometimes make use of private informants. They make use of uh, um, people not having the status of police officer when it comes to interrogations. And if that if if it would be possible that the state derogates responsibility by dislocating um, these acts of interrogation, collecting data to some private company, then the state would be free from responsibility. So in this case in particular, in case of mandatory data retention, uh, data retention, telecommunication data retention is something which uh, the state is responsible for and that is why uh, the interference which of course takes place also if a uh, private company retains data. That data retention, that interference with the privacy right and the right to data protection is uh, something which uh, the state is responsible for. Because, uh, as easily um, explained, the telecommunication providers at least in Germany, they have no interest in retaining the data. There's no commercial interest in that. It might be that Google and, and other big uh, companies that they have, in fact, private interest in retaining as many data as possible. But in principle, there's no commercial interest. In c it's only state interests which are pursued to th that policy and that legislation. So the interference uh, is to be... Um, it has to be justified by the state. And uh, that's why through, um, through separating the, um, uh, the, the imposition of, a, of an obligation through law on the one hand and the collection of data through a private company on the other hand, that doesn't make a difference. So <coughs> let's talk about a little bit with about um, what are the rights of users uh, when this data is, is retained. So in Brazil, many judicial decisions disregard the value of privacy when we're renting access to data stored by companies. And it's not well established what level uh, of protection our constitution affords to electronic data. Do you think that data retention become more problematic in this context? Um, it's um, uh, this kind of data, uh, the, the general retention of telecommunication and uh, social media and uh, internet uh, connections, uh, general retention uh, becomes very, very problematic. Um, and in fact, um, the uh, I think uh, People sometimes uh, misunderstand the risks which are inherent in, in such a data collection and retention policy. Because um, we have to uh, consider what, uh, what, what kind of data are collected. As first, of course, um, uh, very general data on telecommunication and, and, uh, and other things, which in fact when available for a certain period of time, let's say one, two, three weeks for an individual, which make it possible to, um, to establish a profile. A profile of who you are, what your interests are, what you intend to do, and in particular with one week, with a couple of days of, uh, of, of your personal data uh, of your, your traffic data of your, your cell phone, I can say where you will be tomorrow at a certain point in time. And I can predict that quite, quite, quite well. Um, this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, this potential of uh, looking into people, of not only a few a group and uh, under certain commitment, but oh, virtually everybody. That potential is something, of course, these big data approaches uh, in, in a way um, 
are using in a commercialized uh, uh, um, uh, uh, way. But um, there, I think, there should be, there must be effective data protection uh, uh, statutes and, in particular, effective data protection practices which prevent that this can be, uh, in fact, implemented. This kind of, uh, that this potential can be established and that these kind of, um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to put that, these possibilities to, to look uh, what people are doing and to, uh, in a way, uh, that can all, um, be um, uh, justified by, by, by good intentions. Yeah? We want to help you. We want to, to provide you some services. And we want to protect you. Might be you go in, in some risky uh, areas, some risky uh, locations, or you approach uh, persons who could uh, present a danger. So all this, um, um, of course, can come with good intentions, and uh, but um, as at I think at least in, 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 in Europe, there has been a strong, also political uh, uh, intent to protect personal data, not to allow that these big data can uh, can be collected and be used for anything and th that uh, is something I think we, we, we should really consider whether we want uh, a society which uh, where um, at least uh, big telecommunication companies or the state and, and security agencies are able to uh, to use that, um, I, at least in Europe, I think there was a fundamental decision uh, already 10, 15, 20 years ago uh, to uh, prevent that something like that happens and to restrict the, um, uh, uh, not only data collection, but um, to restrict uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the amount of data which is available in societies, the amount of data, personal data on individuals. And uh, with that, of course, um, uh, rules on uh, deleting data, on uh, fixed dates and mandatory deletion um, uh, uh, rules, that is uh, absolutely necessary. Uh, if not, um, uh, that all uh, this kind of data, uh, data uh, collection of these big data, in particular because um, uh, the the hardware doesn't pose any problem uh, anymore. I mean, the, these uh, these masses of data can be stored. There's no, it's not, it's not expensive anymore. It's becoming cheap. It's becoming very cheap. So. Um, um, uh, there must be a, a normative uh, rules which contain that very, very effectively. And uh, we had in, 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 uh, in Europe a couple of uh, uh, constitutional court um, um, uh, decisions where these problems have been discussed and uh, m many constitutional courts in, in Europe uh, followed, in fact, the decision of the uh, European Court of Justice and ruled out the possibility of general data retention as a basic uh, uh, basic uh, condition of uh, uh, um, uh, protecting personal data uh, the, um, and in particular privacy. You had conducted an empirical research about the real necessity of data retention uh, for law enforcement and criminal prevention. Can you tell us about uh, the main findings of this research and do you think that this 
is it strictly t related mm. to German or could also be applied to other countries like Brazil? Um, there again we have to make a difference between the traffic data or uh, location data as they um, become available in the process of telecommunication operations yeah, and retained data. And uh, uh, of course um, I think all uh, the criminal justice systems and all intelligence services in this world make use of or are authorized to make use of uh, traffic data which are made available through the operations of telecommunication companies. There is of course a balancing because in case of criminal justice agency it means there must be a suspicion and a certain seriousness of, uh, uh, of the criminal offence uh, which allegedly had, had been committed. And in case of security um, agencies, intelligence services, there must be a certain seriousness of risk, terrorism and so on. Um, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, what we see from uh, the use of uh, um, telecommunication traffic data as they are made available by operations, not retained data, but this uh, uh, what, what your uh, cell phone is now producing, that is uh, of course uh, is, uh, stored, that is available, but it's not yet retained. You know, retained data, that means um, uh, data which are not uh, commercially uh, used anymore, uh, but which are only made available for future law enforcement, uh, security related uh, 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 actions. So um, uh, when, when looking at uh, the use of traffic data, telecommunication tra traffic data in law enforcement, law enforcement uh, uh, activities, then we see that um, sometimes traffic data can be useful. But in most cases the traffic data are um, um, retrieved from, they don't say anything, they don't say anything. And uh, in the, in, at the end, um, also in those cases, the traffic data can be, uh, can be uh, introduced in criminal investigations. Uh, traffic data in general do not serve as evidence only in extremely rare cases. Uh, however, in most cases they serve to mm, get some knowledge about who has communicated with whom and is there a possible third suspect. And that uh, then might, be, might, might, might initiate other investigations. When it comes to data retention, the use of retained data, then uh, as an example we can, for example, we can use, uh, to, uh, we can use Germany. Germany um, has a kind of, uh, 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 now has again uh, data retention, telecommunication uh, retention uh, um, uh, statute for five years there was nothing because the Federal Constitutional Court has, uh, had vacated uh, the former um, uh, telecommunication uh, retention um, uh, statute. In case of uh, Germany we know that uh, per year approximately uh, about a couple of thousand retained data are used. Now imagine uh, in a couple of thousand cases. Now imagine how many data are retained. It's uh, approximately, we have uh, currently in Germany uh, 120 million active cell phones. Yeah. We have uh, uh, at least the same, the same um, a number of uh, um, 
computer which can be connected to the internet. We have uh, uh, smartphones and so on. So it's only a very, very, very tiny part which uh, is used. However, there's tetrabytes of data available. And uh, that, of course, um, um, must result in balancing because you put at risk millions of people in order to be able to solve perhaps a couple of cases, small number of cases. And then we have to look at what cases are there. I mean, uh, the introduction of mandatory telecommunication retention was justified with uh, serious crime, organized crime, transnational crime, terrorist violence. And when looking at what cases are, uh, in, in what cases that is used, you can probably imagine that it's average crime. Here, a robbery, there, a theft of a cell phone, which can be uh, located because <laughs> there's location data available. Child pornography. I mean, there's everywhere you have these people who download uh, these pictures. Yeah. And then you, you, you uh, have a case with uh, 200, 2,000 suspects. But what that um, in Germany for the possession of child pornography or downloading it will be either the case will be dismissed because it's not considered to be very serious or there will be a small fine. And it's nothing like serious cases. We tried uh, in a, um, um, we had a, a certain conflict, it was two years ago. Uh, two years ago the um, federal um, agency of uh, Bundeskriminalamt, federal criminal criminal uh, criminal police office um, they try to collect cases serious cases murder cases for which they argued retained data had been uh, necessary to resolve uh, the case and to bring offenders suspects to justice so they um, presented uh, seven cases, murder cases, for the whole of Germany. That doesn't sound m many, but for Germany it's a, it's a lot. It's a, and I, um, um, I investigated each case. So in all of these cases, it was possible to bring the suspect to justice within less of one year without the use of uh, com telecommunication data. I'm not sure why uh, the federal um, uh, criminal uh, police office uh, chose these cases, but it was evident that uh, telecommunication traffic data did not play a role. There was one case, it was a high profile case, uh, was a police officer murdered um, close to his place, uh, his place of living, and um, immediately after the, um, uh, the murder, uh, police, it was uh, two or three hours later, police, of course, they um, um, called all telecommunication companies in the area and uh, requested retention of all the data. That is possible. And uh, that has to do with retention, general retention. Uh, what came out of it, what, what was the result of that? Nothing. It was, it was they, they ultimately then uh, saw that there was two people, and possibly suspects, who had been uh, in the area. Then they, um, they had other evidence uh, which uh, connected these people to the, um, uh, to the murder, but um, a judge, an investigating judge, uh, said, decided there's not enough evidence, uh, and so we don't, uh, uh, we cannot uh, go on with the case. So um, even in in this small a small number of very serious criminal cases, there was no real um, 
practical value of uh, um, uh, the telecommunication data. And there's still another problem which we should not forget. Uh, police uh, sometimes are, in a way, um, seduced into uh, relying too heavily on technological aspects of policing. Although we know that uh, these kind of technologies of uh, using uh, surveillance techniques and, and uh, uh, data, uh, this, uh, the, the data mining, which is a retained data are mined, and uh, that that might uh, result in uh, serious problems. And of course, we have not only cases which have been resolved by using retained data or uh, um, uh, traffic data in general, but we have also cases, and quite some cases, where um, the retained data or traffic data resulted in uh, investigating and prosecuting the wrong people. No? Because these had been close to the, uh, close to the place of uh, where the cr criminal offense had been committed. That sometimes might lead in the wrong direction. Um, there's, uh, of course, then something, I'm not sure whether there is a discussion in Brazil that has been discussed, so it's discussed in, in, in Germany with uh, uh, telecommunication traffic data, you get usually also location data and location geographical data. So you know in a certain area you can see these and these cell phones are active and with that you can identify who was uh, in a certain area. Now. Um, that might also result in, um, the que in, 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 in uh, meaningful data because if, for example, a serious robbery has been committed uh, in a certain, at a certain location, at a certain time, police can identify who was in the vicinity. And uh, as most criminal offenders, they are like you and me, they use cell phones. No? And that is kind of a, a strategy which is uh, followed by, I think, many police forces. First, if you don't have uh, a clear information on who could be a suspect, then you look who was in the area. And that might result in, for example, a couple of hundred people suddenly under the suspicion, under principle, a suspicion of being linked to that robbery you know, or to a murder. And uh, that is kind of uh, um, also a question which has to be decided uh, because it's not uh, nice to, uh, to be visited by police and police asks you, look, uh, we know you've been in this location, what did you do uh, there? Have you possibly been to this uh, this uh, shop? And uh, uh, so it's a uh, hundred people, or uh, in a certain location might be a thousand people, or two thousand. Um, and there must be also balancing and weighing. Uh, should that be, uh, in fact, a uh, um, investigation sh a strategy which uh, affects many people? but ultimately results perhaps in clearing up a robbery or um, uh, assault or whatever. So, reaching the last question, um, I would like to, to maybe deepen a little bit this relation between the German context and the Brazilian context. So in Brazil we recently proved the Marx of the Internet which is also known as the Brazilian Internet Bill of Rights, and it establishes the mandatory retention of connection logs and application logs. Connection logs for one year, and application logs for six months. Uh, even though law enforcement authorities' representatives have publicly defended the need to increase uh, even more its investiga investigative capacity and access more information about Internet users. Uh, in Germany, uh, there is a new law regarding data retention which aims to reach the requirements provided by the German Constitutional Court. So what lessons can be brought 
From the discussion in Germany, through broader context of debates on limits of data protection. Um, I think that uh, the, the lessons can be draw, drawn from uh, from German experience, but also lessons can be drawn from the European experience. German experience, uh, the German, uh, German um, um, uh, policy making uh, with respect to uh, data retention um, is in a way uh, not n not based on a firm conviction of, in fact, uh, introducing or reintroducing a general data retention uh, um, a regime. Because after the uh, Federal Constitutional Court had held um, 2011 that uh, the uh, then statute on data retention was unconstitutional, the Federal Ministries of Justice had argued we will not reopen that question, we will not reintroduce a bill until the European Union, the Commission, has presented their own um, vision of data protection, personal data protection, and in this context also um, a retention of uh, telecommunication data. Uh, and that position of not moving and uh, not introducing data retention anymore, that was in a way strengthened through the decision of the European Court of Justice, which held the European Union Directive on Data Retention uh, unconstitutional and in violation of privacy and data protection rights. However, then there was, uh, there was one and a half, two years ago, kind of a, a political move in the Social Democratic Party because the Federal Minister of Justice is a social member of the Social Democratic Party. And he was uh, explicitly against introducing something. However, the, um, uh, the chief of uh, the Social Democratic Party one and a half years ago said, look, we have to fight against transnational crime, junk pornography, and in order to, we have to protect our citizens. In order to do so, we have to reintroduce data retention. And the Federal Minister of Justice, he's not very strong, overnight changed positions and said, now we will try to find something which complies with the German Federal Constitutional Court's decision on the one hand and the European uh, Court of Justice uh, decision on the other hand. So what came out is a compromise. So um, on the one hand, um, the, uh, uh, the drafters had attempted to reduce as much as possible the impact on privacy through reducing the uh, uh, period of uh, retention to a period where police, say, <laughs> police and secret services say, that is uh, crap, because we cannot do anything with that. Uh, we need, as uh, I think Brazilian uh, uh, security uh, uh, and, and police law enforcement uh, agencies will say, we need uh, at least one year, better two years. <laughs> Most probably people argue five years, but 10 years would be best. Mm -hmm. um, um, and that was then the outcome. A maximum of data protection, maximum reduction of the retention period. And so it was a compromise which tried to, um, in a way, uh, come to um, terms with proportionality and this balancing. However, as I said before, there is in principle still no balancing because there is a general retention, although only for a short period of time but general data retention it doesn't make a principal difference. So what we have now, uh, in fact, is something which uh, 
is a compromise which is obviously not in line with the decision of the European Court of Justice and in particular not in line with the decisions of a couple of other constitutional courts in, 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 in Europe. Because it's interesting to see the consequences of the European Court's decision on uh, uh, data retention. It was first the Austrian constitutional court which after a couple of weeks said very uh, shortly and uh, there's no way that in Austria uh, general data retention can be introduced anymore because that would infringe on proportionality and uh, with that on privacy and data protection. There was then the Slovenian uh, constitutional court, the Slovakian constitutional court, Bulgarian constitutional court, Romanian constitutional court. Um, in, in Scandinavia, there's no constitutional courts, but uh, and in, in the Netherlands, there have been uh, um, uh, lower courts deciding in favor of uh, telecommunication co uh, companies which didn't want to continue with retaining after the European Courts of Justice decision. So what we have now in Europe is it's just a mess because we have countries where um, there's a, a firm commitment not to introduce um, uh, retention and there's countries like France and England which are firmly committed to continue. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real split through Europe the European Union and through Europe and uh, that um, I have the impression that is that in, in Germany and in Europe uh, that this not only discourse uh, but the conflicts will continue and um, I don't see any any um, solution at least for the European Union the European Union uh, tried to introduce uh, with the Data Retention Directive 2006 harmonization. Yeah. Now, what, what, uh, now there's uh, no harmonization. There's the biggest, uh, biggest difference is possible in, in, in Europe. And I have the impression that, uh, um, uh, in fact, we should uh, try to sort out uh, a, a a way uh, to use telecommunication um, uh, data um, which of course uh, should under certain conditions be made available uh, for uh, law enforcement purposes and security issues uh, but we should also try to introduce a maximum of data protection and a maximum of uh, protection of uh, privacy and um, I I think I still think that the solution which was provided in the cybercrime uh, convention of the uh, of the Council of Europe um, a long time ago, which um, um, suggested a, a te technique of uh, freezing, of short-term freezing of data, um, if there is suspicion or a certain risk. That that would be a solution which would be in line with uh, the uh, constitutional court's decision we have now in Europe, including the European Court's decision, and which would be in line with a commitment to privacy and uh, protection of personal data. Okay. So um, we would like to thank you uh, for being here. And obrigado a todo mundo.